So, hi guys, this is, this is one of these coincidences that are fun, maybe. So, a couple of guys has reached out to me in the last couple of weeks to talk about fluid dampers and other kind of aftermarket dampers. And um, yesterday, there was another guy. And when he sent a message, I thought, damn, I should do a video about this. So here we are. It is uh, like 38 degrees hot. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, 38 degrees in Fahrenheit is like 318, I think. So it's pretty hot for 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and the sun is not even out. It's, I don't really understand it. I think it's the laser um, satellites that are hitting parts of the earth. So, yeah, for some kind of financial interest. We'll talk about that in another video. So, aftermarket dampers and fluid dampers um, in particular, maybe. We are talking Mercedes diesel engines, as usual, the OM 601, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 normally. And we can go a little bit off topic from some from time to time. But um, let's keep this um, within the range of our engines. No, I can't do that really. So we're going to talk about aftermarket dampers and fluid dampers in particular. And there are... I think most of these products are good products. I think they serve some kind of purpose. Um, it can be profit for the owners. It can be jobs for the employees. Or it can actually do some good on your engine. I mean, we all have some agenda, don't we? So what... Um, how does it work? What do we do? Yeah, so let's talk about engines. I've done a video about this before, but because I have done 316 million videos, I don't expect you to look through all of them just to find this exact one. And I will not put a link in the description like everyone else, because I just don't care. So, <laughs> Uh, there are engines that are, um, by their design, imbalanced. And there are engines that are, by their design, imbalanced. Balanced. Oh, what? what did I say? Out of balance and imbalanced. That's what I was supposed to say. Uh, maybe it's too hot, so I can't really think. Uh, let's talk, for example, normal V8 engines, like American V8 engines, and this is not applicable to the GT350R or the new Corvette, uh, blah, blah, but the normal V8s, American V8s, and normal Japanese and European V8s. They are, by their very nature, uh, or by their very design, out of balance. So, let's say that we have an engine with one cylinder head, like a straight engine. It doesn't matter if that is, by their very design, out of balance or not, because it matters, we, go, we get there. But... But if we only have one cylinder head, the, the ignition sequence of that engine will just be in one line. Uh, so we, we go through this in a moment. But if we have a V engine, so we have two cylinder heads on top of our V. An engine that is by its very design in balance will have an ignition sequence that is bum, 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 
and you can easily understand how this is in balance. A V8 that is by its very design out of balance will have an ignition sequence that is more or less, this is like Chevy small block, but it's, it's more or less applicable to all of the uh, V8s. And they fire like this. Bum, 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 bum. So we easily understand why this is a design that is biased, an engine that is biased very design out of balance, right? So let's look. Let's look at a normal four-cylinder inline engine. There are a few exceptions um, because we're talking cross-plane or flat-plane crankshaft, and a normal four-cylinder engine has a flat-plane crankshaft. That means that the number one and number four cylinder is on the top dead center at the same time, and number two and three is in the top or bottom and most position. I don't know what to say in English at the same time. And when number two and three is on TDC, well, number one and four is on the bottom. So they always think, it, 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 think. Uh, in the middle is like this. So it's it's not it's not like this. It is by its very design in balance. Uh, there are cross plane um, straight fours like Yamaha R1 from 2009 and forward uh, are cross plane inline fours and they sound like a V engine more or less. Um, they also suffer crank problems. But, <laughs> As something else. Uh, normally, straight uh, inline engines are, by the way, designed in balance. Uh, the exception is five cylinders. And because, let's talk the four cylinder because it's so easy when number one and number four is on top and number two and three is on the bottom. It's very easy. So when you spin that crankshaft, you have the same weight at the same place. So it is very easy to balance. Let's talk five cylinder then, because that's a cross plane. It's not really, but it's five cylinder. You can't divide it by two. So, so it's like automatically out of balance by its very design. And then you have to balance that with something that's called bob weights. So you have to weigh your rods and pistons and wrist pin and whatever uh, together and then you have to put the appropriate bob weights on your crank and then balance the entire rotating assembly. You always balance your entire rotating assembly but on a flat plane crank you don't need to use bob weights. You can just balance the crank and pulley and a flywheel or flex plate as it is. But on a five cylinder or a cross plane V8, a normal V8, you have to use bob weights because it is by its very design out of balance. So here is what we're going to talk about today. Fluid dampers and other kind of aftermarket dampers. Many shops, and this is something that I don't really understand. People pay money for this. Many shops, if you do it in your garage yourself, you don't have so many options, right? But if you go to a shop and you buy an engine, you expect that engine to be perfect. Of course, if that engine is new and built and cost $5,000, you can't expect shit, of course. So, I mean, you know what you're buying. But uh, this is a little bit scary because shops build engines and because a cross plane v8 engine a normal v8 engine is so out of balance that it doesn't matter if it's a little bit more out of balance so you don't notice it um, then they can get away not balancing it 
But what do, do, what do they do? Yeah, they invent some stupid shit that is called fluid damper. So you can get rid of the harmful harmonics out of your crank without the need of balancing. Does this make the engine as good as a balanced engine? No. Does it help? Probably not. So, it is a bit of a hack using this stuff. I would say, I told the guy yesterday this, that I don't think the product is bad. I think the product works. But I think that you should do as good a job as you can on your engine before bolting shit on. So if it was me, I would balance everything, do everything properly, and probably use the fluid damper as well. Because if I can get rid of a little bit of harmonic disturbances, I think that's a good thing. So I think the products are good. I just think that it makes people cut corners or it it not makes it. Uh, this is the hard thing with English. Um, it is easier for you as a customer or an engine owner to cut corners because you know there are products out there that let you do that. Um, an engine that is in balance will give you more power and run for a longer time and just run better. You will feel it, you know, it's the one dollar coin standing on its uh, on its end on top of the engine on idle. It's, it's that kind of shit. And I like that. I like when things is smooth and work as intended. Um, there are VAs, of course, that are by its very design in balance, uh, like a Ferrari V8. It's a flat plane V8. The Ford uh, GT350R, the new Corvette. Of course, there are examples of engines that are that way, but they are even more important to balance because they don't have the built-in vibrations. They don't have the built-in out of balance. So you will notice immediately if that is not smooth as silk. Uh, an American V8, I mean, everyone I've seen an old 350 carbureted shit engine and it's just... <laughs> It's crazy. And it's like, oh, it's good. Let it be. It's been like this for 15 years. Yeah, probably more. Uh, so, I mean, that's just what, what they are. Uh, and there are companies that are making flat plane cranks for, for older style American V8s as well. But uh, there are far uh, few and far between. So, what have we learned? Yeah, dampers. Fluid dampers and other kind of uh, aftermarket dampers. I don't think it's bad products. I think they have, um, there we can find some kind of use for them. But I don't think you should cut corners just because you're using a fluid damper. That's my five cents. Don't cut corners ever because it will come and bite you in, the, in your ass. That's, uh, that's what it's going to do. And when we do stuff properly, we actually feel a little bit better because the car will start tomorrow. And when that uh, really, really annoying Ferrari owner pulls up next to you, you can beat him tomorrow as well. If shit breaks, we can't do that. So, yeah. That's my five cents. Have a good day and we'll see you in a couple of days because I have some other shit lined up.